Well, guys, today we're going to talk about pornography. I will say that I've had my fair share of addictions. I never did pick up alcohol. Oh, no, I'm good. Uh, my dad's an alcoholic. It runs in the family. <laughs> I never even picked up drugs. That's okay. I don't smoke. I'm high on life. I mean, I couldn't even do Vicodin when I had dental surgery. Vicodin. Oh my god. It's just so good. I used to pride myself on this idea that I wasn't a full-blown addict. But the reality is there are so many different things that a person can become addicted to. We can become addicted to food or uh, codependency. If we would just do everything that I'm suggesting, we would all be happy. We can become addicted to love. You complete me. I know that was in Jerry Maguire, but I mean that. You complete me. And it's also possible to become addicted to pornography. So officially, pornography has never been added into the DSM as an official diagnosis. However, it's something that is so taboo for us to talk about. And it's something that so many people indulge in and so many people are also harmed by, especially the earlier that you're exposed to it. I discovered porn in third grade when our family got our first computer. And the first thing that I typed into that search engine when I was by myself was sex. And keep in mind, this was back when it was dial-up. So from then on, whenever I could be alone with the computer, I found myself looking at porn. And what people don't understand that just like an addictive behavior or substances, porn also hits that reward center in the brain that gives you that temporary buzz. Patrick Carnes, who is a specialist in sex addiction, uh, coined the term the arousal template. Your arousal template consists of all the thoughts, images, behaviors, sounds, smells, sights, fantasies, and objects that arouse us sexually. And like drugs, our arousal template can be expanded as we continue to seek a bigger and bigger high. And we need more and more graphic content in order to achieve that high that we could easily achieve early on. So then we start seeking out content that has <laughs> with <laughs> and <laughs> and and then it can be really bad. As a result of pornography, I had secrets because I didn't want anyone to know that I was doing this. And as a result, I had shame, I had more isolation, and it also caused me to act out even more in all my other addictions in order to cope with the shame I was having about the pornography. Pornography can also result in sexual anorexia. It's when we starve ourselves of physical and emotional intimacy with another human being. Because if we're acting out with content, then we're not leaving space or room for people in our lives to have those experiences with. I'm not here to speak about the morals of pornography. What I wanna share is that I have had a really difficult experience with what pornography has done in my life and how easily it can become a compulsion and that it is possible to recover from it and to not need or use pornography as part of your sexual life or your sexual identity. What I've come to realize is that the most important thing for me to know is that I'm not alone and that I deserve more. But unless we talk about these things, we can't move through them and we can't move past them. So I'm going to include some resources in the description box below. Hopefully they'll be of service to you. And just take good care of yourselves because you deserve it.